Good evening and welcome to episode 314 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandu Wakumalo. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to the only daily property podcast in South Africa. And of course, we're here to help you along on all your property needs. So do make sure that you go to our Facebook or our YouTube page to catch up on all the great content that you've already missed out on. And to all our regular viewers on Facebook, on Instagram, as well as on YouTube, welcome to it. You know how we do every single weekday. You and I have an appointment at 7 p.m where I'm always in conversation with a property expert who helps us make better property decisions. doesn't matter where in the property you know, space you are, where in your property journey you are. You could be renting right now, looking to be a better renter, perhaps even looking to buy your first property, or of course, growing or expanding your property portfolio. We certainly do can, um, cater to you throughout your journey. And of course, you know how we do it. This evening, we're going to be looking at something that I'm very excited about. But before we get into it, you know that there's a whole host of other shows that you can look forward to on Private Properties social media pages. As it is a Tuesday, I do hope that everybody had a great long weekend. We're able to rest. We're not here uh, last night. And you would have seen a great competition that we're running. I'm going to tell you all about it right now if you didn't see it on our uh, Facebook page. Of course, you can catch, as it is a Tuesday evening, you can catch award-winning farmer Umbali Nwako on the Farming Podcast. And she's on your screens every single Wednesday, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. So if you've got agricultural ambitions or perhaps just want to get a better sense of how uh, you know our food is produced and the value chain uh, within the agricultural sector, then that is a show that you can tune into. And every Wednesday, Esther Clarkson takes us through the first time home buyers show, which is always in conversation with people who've not only walked that first time home buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. And of course, Mondays and Fridays, Chad takes us through the home shoppers show. They always gives us a great uh, tour of incredible properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. So do continue engaging with us on social media, watching the shows and uh, certainly for the next few weeks, you stand a chance of walking away with some cash if you do just that. Now, I did mention that we're running a great competition uh, where we are doing a build up to 1 million followers on our Facebook page. Uh, we certainly have big ambitions, not only want 1 million followers, we also are looking at 10,000 comments because we absolutely love hearing from you. And of course, 5,000 shares. So every single evening I say to you, keep sharing the lives as you're watching them because we want to make the property circle bigger. We want your friends and family to see not only what you're watching, but of course also get great value uh, from the content that we put out. And as I said, you stand a chance of walking away with 500 rands as we uh, build up to you know those big goals and certainly reaching 1 million followers. And all you have to do, and we've shared the competition details also on our Facebook page, but all you have to do is essentially continue engaging with us. You can share, you can comment, um, and certainly uh, rate our page on Facebook. And the more you engage with our page and with us, um, the higher your chances of winning that cash prize. Now, the rules are simple. I'm going to go through the rules because this is one where we all want to make sure we're on the uh, same page. Now, you can comment as many times as you want on the post, as I was saying earlier, and do tune in every single weekday uh, on the Private Property Podcast with myself, as I'm doing Kumalo, every single weekday at 7 p.m. Uh, for the winner announcement. And the winner will be given until the end of the podcast to claim their prize. And the money will carry over to the following episode if the winner doesn't claim the prize. So you have to actually be watching us live uh, in order for you to claim the prize. So do make sure if you enter and you've commented that you actually tune in uh, in the event where you are the winner. Now, the winner is selected randomly 
and the winner will be uh, selected using the comment random collector. And so this essentially, uh, if you comment, the more times you comment, uh, the more you essentially stand a chance of winning. So do make sure that you continue engaging us in social media and commenting um, because of course you will stand a chance of winning that money. Now I will be announcing you know, the winner uh, shortly. I will be announcing the winner in the halfway mark. So do watch out for that. And, and of course, they also have an opportunity to, to claim their prize. But before we get to all things fun, so really the big thing, we're counting down to a million followers and, of course, growing our reach on Facebook, especially on our Facebook page. This competition is on our Facebook page, so do make sure that you continue engaging with us. Our conversation this evening is one that I was saying I'm very excited for. We're looking at opportunities for women in real estate buying in the current environments. Now, we're going to break down this conversation from you know, if you're a first time home buyer as a woman, uh, if you're looking to up upscale or upgrade your current lifestyle. Perhaps you've been living in an apartment, whether it's a one bed or a two bed, you're now looking to move into a cluster or a house. Uh, you know, what should you be aware of? What are some of the do's and don'ts? And then also looking at the uh, savvy property investor who's probably got two or three, um, you know, individual units as their investment and now looking to go slightly bigger, right? Where you're probably wanting that small block of flats uh, because you also understand that you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. You first just want to get how how do you even go about doing the due diligence of, uh, you know, a block of flats? What are some of the do's and don'ts once you're at that level of um, managing your property portfolio? Those are some of the things that we're going to be looking at this evening. Remember, do continue engaging us down here below because you stand a chance of walking away with that 500 rand in cash. Well, my guest this evening is Vilna Havanga, who's a property specialist at Auction Inc. Uh, Vilna, good, e good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Good evening, Zama. Thank you for having me. And a wonderful it's such a pleasure. Day. It's such a pleasure to have you, Vilna, especially after the long weekend that we've had. Uh, I kept saying to, to the viewers at home, even when we started off Women's Month, that for the month of August, we're only speaking to women um, throughout the month. So our guests are only going to be women because we know that there are women in real estate who are authorities on all the different topics that we have, and we want to hear from them. Uh, and as much as we already always have women on the show, but we said for this month, we're going to be deliberate uh, for you know only having women on the show. So it really is a pleasure to have you uh, with us on the day after women's day now Vilna, i think you know, this topic excites me quite a lot because we're really going to be helping women at different um stages of their property journey from those who are looking at you know buying their first property and are probably you know very intimidated as many of us typically do tend to be intimidated uh, with your know, buying a property and signing on a 20 year long commitment to those of course who've been at it for a while and they're looking at scaling their property portfolio and perhaps even buying, you know, a small block of flats uh, within their property portfolio. But I want us to look firstly, just holistically, before we sort of look in those uh, pockets of the different women, holistically, when we look at the buying environment, what should we be aware of um, before we even decide to whether buy or even sell uh, a property that we currently have? Because I think I want us to first just look at a holistic picture before we then go specifically to the first time home buyer, the one who's looking to upscale and then, of course, the more savvy property investor. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, just repeat your question, Zama. So my question is just from a holistic perspective, can you just shed light for us in terms of how the property uh, landscape or the environment is for those who are currently looking to buy or those who perhaps may be looking to sell uh, their property at this stage? Yes, look, currently you're sitting with an absolute bias market with the, in, the interest rate being as low as it is. Um, so anybody that can afford to buy that's renting should really reconsider and purchase a property if they haven't purchased a property. So that's the first thing. We're sitting with, a, with one of the lowest interest rates in years. So it's an absolute buyer's environment. It's not such a great seller's market because of that. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of stock on the market. But, you know, the prices, because there's a lot of stock, is, is uh, very competitive. And um, so I think we've covered it in the previous um, conversation we had um, as well. But your, your buyers that's buying uh, because they're going to live in a property is probably going to spend a bit more than an investor. But, um, again, you know, there's, there's such a lot of – there's a huge scope. Are you going to buy a piece of land and build? 
we're rather going to buy mm. something that has been built and developed because it might cost you a little cheaper at the moment. It might be a, you can buy something bigger, but you know there's pros and cons to both of that. So current market environment is absolutely a buyer's market. Mm. I think one of the, the great things with it being, being a buyer's market, and I can already assure the viewers, we'll, we'll look for in a different episode, you know, what you can do in the event where you're looking to offload your property. Because I think, uh, as, as Vilna's pointed out, it's, it's a buyer's market, not so much a seller's market. And some sellers are, you know, sometimes struggling to get the price point that they may want. So we'll probably do a very different episode along, you know, tips and tricks of selling your property during a buyer's market, especially where you might be desperate to offload uh, that particular property. And it might be your desperation because of, uh, you know, your finances or because there's another property that you, you know, you've, you're you eyeing. So you really do need uh, that off your books as much as possible. So do watch out for that episode. We're definitely going to have it because I know there are a number of people who have also just struggled to sell their properties. So then, of course, we'll know when we look at the buyer's market and how buyers are fundamentally spoiled for choice right now. Let's zoom in on the first time home buyers who are, you know, women and are looking to buy that first property. Perhaps they're renting, perhaps staying at home. Uh, or have been staying with friends because I think one of the things as young professionals that we do is sometimes you you know stay with friends and you do a house share but now you're really you know ready to enter the property market as a homeowner uh, I think what would be some things that you would warn uh, a first-time home buyer who is buying right now during this um, period with the historically low interest rates what would you warn them about because I'm, I'm sure they're excited they want to take advantage of you know the low prices but there are of course certain things that they need to be aware of uh, before they kind of go head first with their purchase yes of course i think the biggest thing always to start with is finance so um, make sure that the affordability of the property keeping in mind the interest rate might not stay where it is for the next 10 years, um, obviously. So keep in mind that the prices might escalate, but also keep in mind that if you buy a property, there are other expenses that you need to consider, like your levies, your rates and taxes with a property, depending if you're buying in an estate or private private um, property or a um, freehold property. Um, that's something that they need that you need to consider as well. And obviously, when you're a homeowner, um, you know your your expenses to a property should also keep in mind your maintenance. So there might be garden expenses if it's not an estate, um, you know, maintenance issues on a property. So I, I think that's the first thing that I would say to a first-time buyer is to keep in mind the expenses that you have to incur when you buy a property. It's not just the bond that you have to repay, but there might be other expenses so make 100 percent sure that you are covered for that mm. um, the second thing i would say to a first-time buyer is where you're going to buy this property are you buying again are you buying in an estate and what are the pros and the cons to being an estate than just a freestanding property um, or you've got, are you buying a piece of land you're going to build your own property or your dream house there so that's also you know always making a list on making sure of exactly what do you want to achieve and what are you looking for. And then the mm. location, the area that you want to buy this property is very important. Um, for, for me, coming from an auction house, Auction Inc., it's always good to know that if you want to buy maybe a property that um, either distressed property or just a private sale, which is a faster process, again, we said the funding must be in place, but that you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, that might be for someone that is already a property owner, but that wants to expand their property, as it's a, it's a bit more challenging for someone to go in through the auction process if they don't understand it. Um, so I think that would be my, my shortest advice at this stage. Mm -hmm. well, uh we, we are, of course, this evening in conversation with um, uh, Vilna Havanga, who is a property specialist, uh, who is a property specialist at Auction Inc. And we are looking at opportunities for women in the real estate, in, in real estate buying in the current environments. And we really have been focusing on the first time home buyer, some of the things that you need to watch out for before you buy that first property, um, because it's such an important one. And as much as it's a buyer's market, you want to make sure that you don't make mistakes that can potentially cost you money. I think time 
is probably a different one altogether. Certain things can cost you a bit of time, especially if you decide to you know, buy land to build. And I always say to first time home buyers, Try to not do that as your as your first property purchase uh, because building is, is is quite stressful. I think building has so many components; it's very stressful. You you typically wouldn't want that as your first property experience. Uh, and so I think that one aside, you want to make sure that you're able to be as cost efficient as possible throughout your property journey. Now, then, Vilna, when we look at women who already have bought, uh, you know, a property perhaps are living in that particular property and are looking to upgrade. You know, as we're saying, we're looking at really great interest rates, perhaps they've, been, they've owned this property for a few years and they're looking at upgrade. What mistakes should they have, uh, avoid? Because at the very least, they have a good sense of um, the costs associated with you know, home ownership, whether they are living uh, in an estate or it's a freestanding property. They know that you're either paying levies, you're paying rates, you know, utilities are to your own account. So they, they've, they've got that aspect um but what should they be particularly aware of right now as they look to upgrade whether you're now moving from an apartment to a cluster or perhaps even uh, a house as opposed to an apartment yes um you know again the expenses that comes along with the upgrade of the property if they're buying a second property that they're going to rent out um as an investment it's very important that the rental agent or that they maybe work with a rental agent to assist them getting the right tenant into that property um, for them. Obviously, they want to look at return on investment, make sure that the tenant that they put in that property is someone that's reputable, that's got a good re track record, that's good, got good finance, pay their, um, their rents monthly because it could be very ch challenging if you sit with a new property that you have to pay you've got a tenant that's not paying the rent, can you afford to cover that for two or three or four months? Because getting someone out of a property might be very challenging. Um, it's not that we want to be negative about it. Just look at the, the, the try and cover your risks um, beforehand by, um, you know, making sure you've got a rental agent, maybe that's registered with TPA, which is a, a body that looks at, you know, the track records of the, rent, the tenants in there. If, it's, if they want to live in the new property themselves, um, also make sure that the maintenance in that property, um, you know, is up to date. Make sure that the, the electricity bills or utility bills are up to date so that they don't get surprises when they buy this property and, um, you know, they might have costs that they did not um, expect. Mm -mm. I want to find out from you at home, uh, you know, women who own property right now, or women who are looking to, you know, buy property. If you're a woman who's about to be a first time home buyer, what are some of the key things that you are slightly nervous about um, when it comes to home ownership? Perhaps you're currently renting and, of course, looking to make that leap into buying, owning your property or buying a property. What are some of your reservations about um, you know, buying a property? And to the women who've already bought a property before and who are homeowners, what were things that you learned after you bought your property um, that you only realized after the fact? So do share with us down here below. I'm in conversation with Vilna Haven. I was a property specialist at Auction Inc. Now, I did say earlier on at the beginning of the show that halfway through, we're going to be announcing the lucky winners uh, who, of course, are going to be walking away with that 500 grand in cash. We're going to go play this quick clip before I announce those lucky winners. Of course, these winners are, are, are chosen, uh, as you will see, via a, a raffle. So the more times you comment, the higher the chance of you uh, walking away with that 500 rand in cash.
as well as Oriabe Tui Mashishi. Um, congratulations. And to, in order to be able to claim your prize before the end of the show, so do stay tuned for tomorrow's money bag and see if you're the winner of our 1 million rand followers on Facebook. So you do need to claim that prize before the show down here below. Uh, so do make sure that you get to it so that the team can reach out to you um, once you have claimed your prize. So we do have 1,000 rands in the money bag in the event where we do not get uh, the winners to claim their prize. Now, of course, I'm in conversation this evening with uh, Vilna having a property specialist at Auction Inc. And we're looking at uh, you know, opportunities in real estate for women and how the current buying market is like, whether you're a first time home buyer looking to upgrade your property portfolio or rather looking to upgrade your, to a new home uh, or, of course, looking to expand your property portfolio. And I really like the, the insights that you've shared with us, Vilna, when it comes to understanding costs, because I think this is one of those two big areas that catch so many of us off guard when we buy a property. I've seen it a lot with first-time home buyers. Uh, I've had the same you know, issue. Sometimes people don't know that you're going to be paying for levies and rates. They think, you know, and I know this is a thing that also happened to me where I thought, well, I knew about levies. I didn't know that I also still had to pay rates um, in addition to paying levies. I thought, well, the levies pretty much cover um, the money that you know is paid to the municipality only to later find that no actually I also need to pay um, the municipality in addition to the levies so not having a good understanding of these things obviously catches up with us right especially if you are whether buying that first property or upgrading if you you buy that property sort of at the tail end of your affordability these costs that you don't budget for will certainly uh, lead to lifestyle creep so you really want to be aware of them as much as possible perhaps even factor in a 10 percent increase um, in those costs and see if you're still able to be comfortable uh, in your budget so as i asked earlier on i want to find out from you at home if, you, if you're about to be a first-time home buyer what are some of your reservations about making that leap into home ownership uh, do you share with us and of course to the women who've already bought uh, property or properties before what did you learn after you bought your first property that you absolutely do wish you had known prior to that first purchase? Now, Vilna, I want us to look at the third sort of category of, of women, right? So these are the, the, the savvy investors. And we, we certainly do have quite a number of them who watch the show from you, Marta Shinange, Glenn Shirinda, uh, you know, Queen B, Mabunda. There's quite a number of them who watch the show. They're property investors. And they are obviously looking at different ways to grow and scale their portfolios. When we're now looking at women who've got a few properties under their belt that they're managing and are looking to, let's say, for example, buy that first block of flats. Um, so it's a slightly bigger purchase and it's certainly got more, you know, bids to cater for and a whole other things to look out for. What should they be firstly aware of when it comes to buying that kind of we'll call it asset class? When you're now buying a, a block of flats. Um, and it can be multi, you know, multi-use where it's the, let's say, 10, 10 units and perhaps the ground floor, you've got two, um, you know, two shops. So there's a, there's a com commercial component to it as well. What should they be aware of when they start making those kinds of purchases or adding those kinds of purchases to their property portfolio? Sure. Um, Zama, yes, I think the hidden costs could be something that they need to look at, um, which, you know, we've discussed it as well with your first new um, second time buyers. But when you buy a property that's either got commercial rights included or just a block of flats, you want to make sure that for every square meter of that property, there's an income related to that square meter, specifically on the, on the retail side. So make sure that there's no wasted areas and that you can capitalize as much as possible or utilize as much as possible of that building to turn it into a money generating asset for you. Um, on the blocks of flats, you know, there's various options. You can either rent out the flat to long-term tenants, or you can even subdivide some of the flats, for example, for student accommodation or for or for lower budget housing, but you can put more people in a flat if you rent it out per room, which is also popular in certain areas. So depending on where the block of flats is situated, um, you know, you sit with various options to increase the income of the property. 
So I would say that would be the biggest thing for any third-time investor to look at is what can I do to optimize the income of this property? Um, and obviously utilize, um, you know, we've seen so many times that your, your electricity bill, if you put prepaid meters in, for example, that's something that's very easily doable, but the cost is much less for you and it's much more cost effective when you've got prepaid electricity and even possibly prepaid water meters. So um, it could bring, you know, the administration of that could be much easier if you put that on board as well. And then the maintenance, the management of the block of flats. Are you going to do it yourself? If you're going to get someone to do it, you must also factor in that there's a cost involved for a management agent to do it for you. There's pros and cons to both of it, doing yourself or getting someone to do it for you um, with advantages to both sides. So those are things that, you know, for you to consider when you buy the, the block of flats. And then obviously living in South Africa, security. Security might be a very big thing for um, you know, to, to consider um, to make sure that your your block of flats is secure for the tenants. And obviously, you don't want a high turnover in, in, in your in your tenants that live there. So I would factor a cost for security as well into that. Mm -mm -mm. And that, you, you know, Vilna, we could probably have a, a whole episode when we're looking at buying uh, you know, buildings that can be for commercial use as well. And and we, and we actually, well, I'm going to promise viewers that we're going to do an episode on that because I know that increasingly more and more people want to venture into that. Some want to build. So looking, as we we're saying earlier, you know, buying a piece of land and rather building themselves uh, from scratch so that they, they know that they're putting in those prepaid meters from the get-go, prepaid electricity from the get-go, um, as opposed to having to, you know, buy a building where, those were not put in and now you have to have the extra cost of sort of almost redoing uh, certain aspects of the electrical supply and the water supply, which can be quite costly, um, especially the bigger the project is, the more costly um, it tends to be. When it comes to buying those kinds of properties, Vilna, what have been some, I'll say, common mistakes that you've seen people uh, making, especially the newbies who've never quite bought, you know, a block of flats um, before? Any mistakes that you'd like to share that you've seen um, purchases making when buying uh, blocks of flats? Yes, I think they must, they must keep in mind because it's a block of flats with or without a commercial component, it will be a commercial deal with the banks. So let's consider that it's not somebody that's buying a property cash. They need to put a deposit down and the, the payback period for a commercial property is much less than with a residential property. So for anybody that wants to venture into properties, it doesn't matter if it's your second um, property that you're buying or if you want to venture into commercial properties, it's very good to build a relationship with a business broker or a bond originator um, that can maybe do both residential or commercial or you get your specialist that only do residential or commercial. So do your homework and make sure that you understand 100% how it's structured with the banks because often the banks are going to say to you, you have to put a 20 or a 30, sometimes even a higher deposit down on a mm -hmm. commercial property and your payback might to be 10 years instead of 20 years. So that's something that, then, that you need to consider. Also make sure that when you do your due diligence on the property, that you make sure you've got up-to-date plans of the property and everything associated with that, um, the zoning of the property, the zoning rights, all of that, the, the, the plans that's approved by city council, um, because if you have to do it on application, or it could even cause you to lose a deal if it's not in place. So make sure that all the paperwork is being handed to you when you sign that offer to purchase, um, and it's up to date. Mm. Vilna, before I let you go, any final tips for um, you know, our women, particularly women who are going to be buying uh, during this buyer's market, uh, whether they're a first-time home buyer, they're looking to upgrade, or of course, the savvy investor, any final tip for them that can help them on their property journey? Yes, I think, again, location is very important. Go on private property as much as possible and look at what the the properties in a specific area are selling for, so that you know, you must always keep in mind that whatever you buy, you have to resell that property at some stage. 
Mm. So make sure that, you know, the maintenance of that property needs to be taken care of 100% and that whatever you do, you don't overprice a property so that it's difficult for you to sell that property. Um, mm. That you've got a growth factor worked in to the, the cost for it. Say you're going to keep it for five years or 10 years or even maybe in a family trust, but that this is stable growth. So don't overcapitalize on a property. So do your homework. Do your research in an area, go on private property um, and look at what properties in that area on in relation to what you want to buy is selling for. Mm. Well, well, now we're going to leave it there this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Zama. I appreciate it. And that is Vilna having I was a property specialist at Auction Inc. Wrapping up the Tuesday edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself as I'm doing Kumalo. It has been a pre-recorded interview. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening live uh, to bring you the latest installment of the Private Property Podcast with myself as I'm doing Kumalo. Until then, hoping you're staying home and staying safe.